May was a busy month for me. I would say the first three weeks of May, it was really slow with makeup launches, so I didn't try a ton of new products. So I found myself really just using what I had a lot this month. And also with the heat, I was into very much more natural makeup. I know it doesn't look like it, but if I'm like running out on the weekends and stuff, I know I'm gonna be sweaty. I have been throwing on that much makeup. And I will talk about that as we get into it, but all of my favorite products for May. It was interesting this month. I feel like the first three weeks of May, not too much launch. So I found myself in a repetitive stage of makeup, just testing all of this stuff and really getting a good feel for the stuff that I was testing. And then the last month of May, oh my gosh, so much launch. There's probably gonna be products in next month's favorites that launched this month. But I'm making sure, of course, all of the products that I'm sharing with you have just stood out and have been amazing and working well. Let's get into it. We're gonna start off with our base products. I actually, interesting enough, don't have any true like base products, no primers, foundations. There's a couple things that I think will be in next month's favorites that I'm actually wearing on my face. If you want to check the description box, but I'm still in the testing phases. They haven't 100% stood out. So the first thing that I have is actually a face powder. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics and Robin collaboration. It's called the Powder Move Loose Setting Powder. So this launched the previous month, but I've just been using it so much and I really feel like it is a powder that has stood out to me. When this first launched, Jacqueline said that she thinks this powder should go viral. It's that good and I have to say it's a pretty amazing powder. I did use it today to set my under eyes just for the demo but I actually don't really recommend setting your under eyes with this because it has a very very subtle glow to it that I find not to be the most flattering on the under eyes but other than that it is beautiful all over the skin. I feel like it has smoothing properties to it that makes the skin look smooth but there is a subtle glow to it that doesn't emphasize the texture and it just makes the skin look really beautiful and healthy. And every time I use this powder, I really have been enjoying how my complexion has looked. As long as I stay away from the under eyes with this, I love kind of packing it into the center of my face. Despite it having a glow, it does not look unflattering on pores or anything or texture. And since this was in collaboration with her mother who has more mature skin, I can definitely see that inspiration and who this was made for. And I really believe that this is a beautiful powder for mature skin as well. If I was still actively doing bridal clients, I would put a powder like this in my kit because I think it has enough oomph to it to really set and smooth the face, but there's just something about it that I think mature skin would really love. So I've been enjoying this. I think it is a stunning, stunning powder. That launch that she did with her mom was pretty good, and this powder definitely stood out to me. Like 90% of this video is cheek products because there were so many amazing cheek products that came out. So this is one of the newest products that I've tried, but I already know it's gonna be a favorite, so I'm just gonna throw it in this month. This is the Charlotte the Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzers. It's Charlotte's new cream bronzer and I already love it. So I picked up two shades, fair and medium. I think I prefer medium on my light medium skin tone. I do have a little bit more of a tan as well than I normally do. So I would say that also contributes to me liking the medium. It gives more of a warmth to my face, but I also think fair works really well on my skin tone as well. It's a little bit more cool. I would go for fair on a more natural makeup day and then on a day where I either want to look more bronzy or I'm wearing more of a full glam, I will go more for the medium but both look really beautiful it has a kind of moussey texture to it which I find works really great with the oils and the sweat for the summer in May it's gotten significantly hotter than it was when I first moved down here to Florida in the late February and I've already told you guys like I'm a sweaty person and I'm even more sweaty now than I ever was because since I live in a city I live in a more walkable area like it gets really really hot and humid in Maryland okay but in Maryland I lived in more of a suburban area so if I wanted to go somewhere I'd get in the car I'd step outside then I'd get in the car with AC then I'd step outside again to go inside to where I needed to be so I really wasn't out in the sun sweating so now that I live in a city and I'm walking a lot to get to where I need to be I am so sweaty 
I've never been so sweaty in my life. <laughs> and I find that this really holds up well with my sweat. I mentioned in my review of this, because it has more of a, that moussey texture as opposed to a really creamy emollient feel to it, it's going to last better for those of you with oily skin. If you're sweating more, if you live in a hot climate, I think that this has had pretty good staying power. You know, it doesn't stop me from sweating, but I find that when I, you know, dab with my napkin, this doesn't go everywhere, it doesn't run everywhere, I don't get sweat streaks. So I've really, really been enjoying this. I love the consistency of it. Normally I'm super into those really emollient cream bronzers, like Rare Beauty has one of the most emollient formulas ever, but in terms of if I know I'm going outside, and I'm wearing a full glam, and I want my bronzer to stay, or not even necessarily stay. I understand the sweat's a lot to work with, but just to not look bad. As I sweat, I've been enjoying this. It really is the bee's knees of a cream bronzer. Okay, the next product is also a new product. I've been testing this a lot. The Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancers. People got really upset with me because I used this in the powder version of it all over my face. I was just testing it, guys. Oh my goodness. I found the way that I like to use these and Obviously, I'm liking it because I'm putting it in my favorites video. So I have two shades, light and light medium. I prefer light medium. If you're around my skin tone, definitely pick up light medium. But I'm still enjoying the light since I have it. So how I've been liking to use this, like I said, it's been really hot out. <laughs> or at least it's felt like it's been hotter out because I spend so much time outside when I leave the house. I haven't been necessarily like as motivated to pack on a bunch of makeup if I know I'm gonna be sweating. So I actually really love this for no makeup makeup, which is a look that I've really been enjoying. So I will put this on the outskirts of my face and then a little bit of concealer in the center of my face and I'm pretty much good to go with my complexion, a little bit of powder and blush for that no makeup makeup look. This is perfect. It doesn't even out the skin, but because of that soft bronzed warmth look that it gives, it does kind of like evens out my freckles a little bit, I guess. So it doesn't give coverage, but because of the color, it kind of makes it all come together. I had a comment on my original review of this. If you have melasma, this is probably a good product for you. It gives such a pretty subtle glow. And so what's different about this than normal cream bronzers is that the finish of it and the pigment of it is really, really soft. So you can literally use this on bare skin and it won't look weird. You know, if I were to put the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer on my skin with nothing else, my face might look a little dirty it would look a little bit much whereas with this because of the subtle soft glow that it gives and how sheer it is it looks very natural without any other makeup I could even get away with not applying concealer if I just use light it will blend in seamlessly with the skin while still giving that warmth to the outskirts of the face. So I see what Mario was doing with these. This really is so, so, so good. It's a great product. I haven't actually tried it yet on like a full coverage foundation. And that was something I set out to do, but that's because I've just been loving it on bare skin. So for no makeup makeup, I've been loving this. Now there is a powder version to it as well. I'm not putting it in this month's favor. I'm still playing with it. I just haven't fallen in love with the powder as much as I've fallen in love with the balms. More bronzers. Yeah, I have four bronzers in this video, but I'm just so excited that ColourPop launched their matte bronzers. I've been waiting for them to expand their bronzer line, aka they didn't have any. They've come out with bronzers in limited edition collections, but never one permanent to their line, and I'm assuming this is permanent based on the packaging. There are two bronzers. They're kind of hard to open, so let's kind of but you know, you don't pay too much for them. I got asked what my favorite shades were. There's a couple that I like. Summerland Beach is awesome, and then Silver Strand Beach I've been enjoying for a lot of warmth, depending on what the look that I'm going for is. But these are an affordable bronzer, and they really are so beautiful. I love the way they blend on this skin. Are these the best bronzers I've ever tried? No, but they're from ColourPop. I think they're such a great price. They have a pretty nice shade range. It might be a little confusing at first. The undertones, some run very warm, some run pink, but once you get the right shade, I just think it is a good find from ColourPop. It co completes their collection. So it's something that I've been excited about because I've been wanting a new ColourPop bronzer and I feel like they did a very great job with their formula given the price. Okay, this is the last powder bronzer, but I have to mention the new Sigma matte bronzers. I love 
love a good matte powder bronzer. So again, there's usually a couple of different shades of bronzers that I like depending on the look that I'm going for. Light is quite light on me, but it's really great for a more natural no makeup makeup look. And then also medium is for a little bit of intensity. So why I like these so much is I feel like they are so smoothing to the skin. Just the finish that they give on the skin really just evens everything out, softens the look of the face, breezes over texture. It really is special because of how smooth it makes the skin look. That's what I don't get from a lot of bronzers and I find it's quite easy to blend. The one thing I will say about these is I do think they are a bit overpriced. I definitely do not recommend buying these at full price, but Sigma has a bunch of sales and when their next one comes, I will let you know because the bronzers and the blushes, highlights that they launch are all beautiful. I just think they're a bit pricey for an individual shade, but if you can get them on a discount, they're all beautiful. I've just been reaching for the bronzers a lot. I've also been reaching for the blushes, but they weren't quite enough to make it to the favorites, but they were good too. Moving on to blush, I have two different formulas. So I'm late to the game on this, but a few weeks ago, Bare Minerals sent me their blonzers, which are a mixture of bronzers and blushes. Oh my gosh, these are so good. And I think of Bare Minerals formulas, I just didn't think they would come out with this. So I have two shades. I have Kiss of Pink, which is the one that I've been using a lot. And then I also have Kiss of Copper, which I have on the outer parts of my cheek. This gives a little bit more warmth. And then I have Kiss of Pink kind of more on the apples and on the center of my nose. What's special about these is I love their glow. I think it is such a pretty glow, but they still contain a lot of pigment. Almost too much. You know, I have to use a light hand, but they blend like butter over the skin. They're super easy to work out. And I think the finish is gorgeous. Now I know these claim it's like a bronzer and a blush mix. And while I do agree because of the tone, you don't need to apply bronzer. That would only be for like a no makeup makeup look. What I've been doing is the makeup by Mario Balm on the outer parts of my face, a little bit of concealer, whatever it may be, touch a powder, and then I will use these bronzers on the cheek and I'm good to go. That looks like that great no makeup makeup look, but if I'm doing full beat, I still need a bronzer with these. So these do not replace bronzer. They still have too much of a like pinky or orangey turn, whatever color you picked up. However, the formula is just so stunningly beautiful. I mean, these have been popular for a while, but yeah, I tried them this month and I love them. They're a beautiful formula. Next up from Odin's Eye, they had just a phenomenal collection launched this month, the Soulmane 2 collection, and I loved the blushes that they launched. A lot of them ran very warm, which I don't typically reach for warm blushes that often, but there's this shade that is so beautiful. So first of all, just admire this packaging. I mean, I don't know how Odin's Eye does it. They do such a great job and they keep, I think the price is pretty reasonable. So the shade that I've been loving is the one pinky blush in this collection. There also is a shimmery pinky blush, but this is a matte blush. This is Sunset Clouds. It is so pretty for any kind of pinky look or when you want your cheek to like pop. It's beautiful. I love the matte formulation. They are very pigmented though, so you definitely need to use a light hand. I played with a few other colors since, you know, first trying this collection and a multitude of times I might have applied too much. Went in with a little bit too much of a heavy hand, but the finish on the cheeks are really beautiful. I think their matte formulation is a bit blurring as well. So I've been enjoying all of the blushes in the collection period, but that's my favorite and Odin's Eye just killed it. Okay, and then lips, I will do eyeshadow palettes at the end, but lips, ColourPop along with the bronzer, they also launched some new shades of the So Glassy Lip Gloss. It's kind of a new formulation. They have like a shimmery, glittery formulation that was here prior, but this is the first kind of flat shades, and I love this entire collection. I'm sharing with you my two favorites in today's video, but the whole collection is beautiful. It's six shades of a nude gloss for everybody. So right now, I'm wearing the shade La Ho Hoya? 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 Yeah, <laughs> I said La Jolla in the last video because they didn't even click to me like California Spanish pronunciation anyways. La Jolla and then Newport is also nice. It's a little deeper. So these are not a sticky formulation. They don't have a lot of pigment. They're sheer, but they're not sheer enough to where all of them look the same, but they just blend in so beautifully with whatever lip liner that you might be using. Since I'm such a big fan of a lip liner, like a nude lip liner and a lip gloss over top, these have been perfect because they're not too pigmented. So you can see the lip liner underneath, but they still kind of even everything out. And I just think the colors overall are gorgeous. There's a nude shade for 
everybody. These two have been my favorite. Today I used a Makeup by Mario. It's like a rosy toned lip liner, but I still wanted some gloss and to milk it down a little bit. So this shade has just been perfect and you still keep the integrity of that lip liner underneath so love that okay and then eyeshadow palettes this is gonna finish up makeup if you don't know i do do like a eyeshadow palette rankings every month for all of the eyeshadow palettes so you will see these but it might change i was looking at my palettes i'm not sure but as of now these are the palettes that stood out to me let's start off with the ones that i've been wearing you guys know what a big Vizzy art fan so they came out with four kind of macaroon inspired eyeshadow quads and i liked most of them but these two i i just love so much so i actually combined both of these to create my look to so we have Lavande here first, which is a purple palette. This is such an easy to use palette for beginners. The purple mattes in here don't have the highest level of pigmentation, but they're very easy to use, very easy to blend out. So I started off with the lightest shade all over my crease. It doesn't give too much color, but it gives a really great transition for whatever look that you're doing. Then I went in just a little darker, kind of focused this more so, a little bit lower in the outer corner and then I blended it in and that was really easy to use. This one takes a little bit of building up but still very easy to use, not powdery. And then I used the darkest shade in the outer corner, blended that out. Again, not the most pigmented purple but also very, very easy to use. Then on my eyelids, I popped into Pistache which I think this one is my favorite favorite okay I think the greens here are just so beautiful and the shimmers are everything so I started off with the lighter shimmer in this palette on the inner half of my eyelid kind of did a soft cut crease style look and then I finished off with this green right here in the middle of the eye I made sure I blended the green and the purple together so I went in with more of the dark purple in the lavender palette I think this is beautiful these are super duper easy palettes to use I definitely recommend these if you're trying to get into busy art but don't once it breaks the bank and you like these color stories, really, really great. I've been enjoying those and I am a little biased. I love Vizier. I love what they create. So I've been extra excited and have been gravitating more towards these because I love Vizier, but they're beautiful, beautiful palettes. And then finally, the last makeup item I have in today's video, I could not not mention the Odin's Eye Solmon 2 palette. This is just the most gorgeous, gorgeous purple, blue, and orange palette. The quality of this palette it is really spectacular. There is not a single dud in this. Odin's Eye just keeps getting progressively better and better with whatever collection they launch from the packaging to the quality. I think Odin's Eye is that perfect medium of value. Like you get such amazing quality while still keeping it at a somewhat affordable price point and their color stories are always out of this world. Everything about the experience. I cannot say enough good things about the brand and the Soulmate 2 palette just kicked butt. Love the the looks that I've been creating with this super high quality. Okay, now in terms of bags, I have two bags I want to share with you that I have been loving. So the first one is just a $20 bag from Amazon. I got this a couple months ago and I have been using it nonstop. I will link it down below. It's like a fanny pack. So how I've been wearing this is across my body. I'll show you. Just like this, I'm a really petite person. So <laughs> it takes up a lot of my body. But this is just my kind of like grocery store errands, hot girl walk kind of situation. It's, it's cheap, you know, it's not the highest quality, but it gets things done. I've been really into this style bag. You know, if I'm wearing like leggings and a t-shirt and I need to go on a walk or I need to run to the store really quick, this has been my casual grab bag. There's a couple different compartments and a zipper in front and it's just been really great. I am looking into maybe getting a different color in the Lululemon one, which is twice the price. I was originally looking at a Lululemon bag, but since I wasn't sure if I would wear the style of bag, I got something cheaper from Amazon and I love it. So I think eventually, maybe not now, I want to get a Lululemon one that is not black since I have this and I love it. And I recommend it just grab and go. Now in terms of cute bags, what I've been loving is my Kate Spade Smile bag. I just think it is the cutest bag. The shape is super versatile. It's a very trendy shape as well. I got it on clearance. I believe it still is on clearance on the Kate Spade website. It is from their retail site, but I love this blue. They also have a pink, which is gorgeous. And this has gone with a lot more than I thought it would. I wasn't sure how often I'd end up using it, but we have this metal strap, which honestly is kind of heavy. 
heavy. I don't know if I love it. I like the look of it, but it is a little heavy, but I've still been wearing it regardless. And then I actually wear it a lot in crossbody, which I didn't think I would do. And I think the metal looks so cute. But anyways, this has been a really nice crossbody bag that I have just been throwing on. I ended up using it all of last week. And surprisingly, I don't know how it worked out, but it did go with all of my outfits. I like that you can take the crossbody strap off and just, you know, wear it under the shoulder. I've been loving the shoulder aspect of it as well. So this is really cute. I'm gonna link it down below because it is just as functional as it is cute. And that is all I have for this month's favorites. Thank you guys so much for sitting down and letting me talk about my favorite new products that I tried this month. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel. I love everything that I talked about down below. And yeah, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.